Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the brand new Tuya Home Assistant integration released in the 2021.10 release of Home Assistant, but significantly improved in the 2021.11 release of Home Assistant. We're going to get a bit more of an idea of just how it compares to the old integration, which as you know, I've never really been a fan of. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week and let's get started. So earlier this year, Tuya announced that they were working on a new integration for Home Assistant to allow far better control of Tuya enabled accessories from the Home Assistant dashboard. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll have seen the poor implementation of some of the features using the Home Assistant Tuya integration to the point that our robot vacuum cleaner, Murphy, doesn't even show up in Home Assistant at all. The uh, Mirabella Genio bulb I tested in the four-way smart bulb comparison video didn't even show the RGB controls, it was just on and off. And the smart switches from Brilliant and Arlec with energy monitoring didn't pass through the energy monitoring data to Home Assistant. Again, I could only see the on and off functions. Now in the October 2021 release of Home Assistant, the new two year integration was released uh, and this integration was very clearly still a work in progress uh, and it does use a different API. So you do need to set it up again. In the November release of Home Assistant, the 2021.11 release, there have been some very significant improvements to the two year integration, uh, which actually solved a fairly major issue for me trying to use the new two year integration. I was not able to use the October release, but the November release is working for me. So if you've already got the two year integration set up in Home Assistant, you'll want to remove it so that we can set up the new integration. Now, as I said, I tried to film this video three weeks ago, but the integration didn't work for me. I spent a bunch of time going back and forth with two years technical support team who ended up giving up saying that they couldn't support the API and that I needed to use a new API, but I was using the new API and the new integration. Uh, so uh, there was definitely some communication issues there. My overall experience with two years technical support was pretty poor. And that experience with two years technical support really didn't help my opinion of two year accessories at all. But after updating to Home Assistant 2021.11 earlier this week, everything started working for me with the two year integration. So if you are struggling with the October release of Home Assistant and the new two year setup, I would recommend updating your Home Assistant if you haven't already. Now it is worth noting that this new integration is still not a local API. It is still a cloud API. And I get the impression that a local API is not coming to Tuya anytime soon. So if your internet goes down or there's a problem with the Tuya servers, you might have trouble connecting to your accessories. With all of that out of the way, let's dive in. Now, first things first, it's always a great idea to check out the documentation for any new integration on the Home Assistant integration site. And uh, you can see I've got the two year documentation up here and we've got the add my integration uh, up here if we wanted to just add that to my Home Assistant. Uh, we'll do this the hard way rather than doing this easy way. To configure the two year IoT platform, we obviously need to have added those accessories to either two year smart or the smart life app. You know that I use the two year smart app. Uh, and we'll need to create an account in the Tuya IoT platform. And this is a separate account from the one that you would make for the app. This is basically a developer account for the Tuya ecosystem. Now, if we pop over to that site, I've already got an account with the Tuya ecosystem, uh, but if you don't, you can click this sign up button down here and sign up. 
So I'm going to um, pause the video there, sign in, uh, and then we'll take a look at the next steps. So once your account is created, you'll need to log into the developer console, which is what we have here. And uh, we're going to need to create a cloud project. So if we go down here to cloud and go to development, you'll see I've already got um, some projects here. I'm going to create a new one for the purposes of demonstration. I'll click create cloud project. I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to go home assistant demo uh, in the industry we're just going to put smart home uh, in the development method I'm going to put smart home and the data center I've found that my data center works only on the central Europe data center so I'm going to hit create on that and we're going to get our new platform there and we're going to need to add something into this configuration wizard and if I just double check the uh, documentation here so we've gone to cloud development create cloud project uh, we've selected smart home and for the data center field select the zone we're located in that's fine we have hit create so we need to add the device status notification so if I pop back over here and scroll through here I want device status notification I'm going to click that so that that's over in there just check that I don't need anything else no we'll just click authorize now and that is authorizing. Fantastic, so it's created an access ID and an access secret. We also now need to link this to our to your smart app. So what I can do is go to the devices tab across the top here, uh, and you'll see we've got nothing in here, but if I click this link to your app account and add an app account, we get this QR code that we can scan, and we can scan this with either the uh, smart life or the to your smart app. So I'm going to open my to your smart app I'm going to tap the plus symbol in the top right corner and I'm going to tap the barcode Symbol in the top right corner and I'm going to scan this QR code uh, and it's saying that we're logging in uh, To I'm not sure what that says and please make sure it was you we will hit confirm login so now that we scan that QR code you'll see that we've got um, the app account is linked and if I go back to all devices here we've got our devices listed here. If I head back to the overview in a moment when we set this up in Home Assistant so I'm going to need this access ID and the client secret I'm going to pop over to Home Assistant and I'm going to go to configuration and I'm going to go to integrations and I'm going to click add integration and I'm going to search for two year. Uh, and in the country I'm going to select Australia and I need to grab the access ID and the access secret from over here so I'm going to copy that paste I'm going to click this icon here to copy the client secret and paste that in there and then I need to put in my login for the to your smart app itself so I'll type that in here okay and hit submit okay so this login error 2406 skill id invalid this is the problem that i'm getting with the october release of home assistant so what i'm going to do is go to supervisor and you'll see that i'm on 2021.10.5 and this is my demo instance i want to update to 2021.11.3 so i'm going to hit update and then when we come back from this update we should be good to go with this two-year integration uh, and we'll do exactly the same thing that we've just done but we should see completely different behavior so i'm going to pause the video there and when we come back we will be good to go with this two-year integration so we've updated Home Assistant to the latest release of Home Assistant, which is 2021.11.3 uh, as of today. Uh, and we see we don't have any more updates here. So I'm going to pop over to configuration, integrations, and I'm going to hit add integration. And I'm going to search for Tuya and click that there and I'm going to select Australia again I'm going to go and grab my IOT access ID and secret from the website here so in home assistant demo got my access ID I'll paste that in there and I'll copy my secret using that link there and paste that in there pop in my username and password and that's the username and password that I use for the to your smart app and hit submit 
and this time we didn't get the error and we now have success created the configuration uh, for my account uh, and we can choose the area so the power board here is in the and these are the scenes that I set up in the previous video, the deep dive on the To Your Smart app. Uh, I'm not going to worry about assigning those to an area, I'm just going to hit finish. So now we've got the To Your Smart app, I'm just going to rename that to To Your uh, and so that I don't have to blur out my email address uh, and we see we've got nine devices and 18 entities if I click on nine devices we see all those devices there and I'm going to hit the overview and we can start exploring what accessories we can see uh, now home assistant is still starting up after rebooting uh, so we'll give it a minute Okay, great. Home Assistant just alerted me that it had finished starting up. So uh, on our dashboard here, you'll see we've got Starlight Projector in the bedroom. Uh, we've got uh, some other bits and pieces. So if I scroll down, we've got in the living room, we've got the power board socket one, two, three, and four. Uh, and if I turn off number four, uh, and I can see that came through uh, over here. Now I use the spare room as a bit of a catch-all for uh, the stuff that I don't actually generally put anywhere uh, that I use in the studio setup. Uh, at some point we may actually set up a proper studio rather than filming here in the dining room. Uh, but you'll see that we've got Brilliant Socket 1 and Arlec with Energy Meter PC399HA Socket 1. So if I click next to that uh, let's take a look at the brilliant socket we'll see we've got the brilliant socket one uh, last seen four minutes ago no logbook entries and we can turn that off and on there's a bit of a perceptible delay um, It's maybe half a second of delay between the time that we turn something off and the time that it actually uh, turns off. So uh, the brilliant, uh, brilliant one there, uh, the Arlec, we'll try turning that off and back on. Uh, and if I click next to the Arlec, we'll take a look there. And again, we've got on and off. Uh, we don't have any of the energy monitoring in there. So uh, we're yet to actually see any benefit from this new version of the integration. So we, we see that both the Arlec and the Brilliant, we're not seeing our energy monitoring data, and I'm not super happy about that. Um, but if we click on the uh, Genio test bulb here, let's turn that on and you'll see that the light comes on and if we click and expand there we've got our brightness and we can turn that down and that's worked uh, and there was a perceptible delay and we've got our color temperature and we can change that that's gone very blue we'll go back to a warm and we've got color here as well so we can go uh, blue and red and green so we've got all the functions again of our lamp here. So while the smart switches are not showing me the energy monitoring data, the bulb is showing me all of the functions except for the uh, animated scenes, which I'm not too fussed about in Home Assistant. I really just wanted to be able to control things like uh, color and temperature. So that's the switch entities and the light entity. Um, I'll just check here. And there is again a bit of a perceptible delay between the time that we click the button to turn it on and the time that it takes to turn it on. It's it's about half a second. Um, it might not be a problem for most people. Uh, to be honest, it's probably that not that much of a problem for me, uh, but um, it is a perceptible delay between the time that you trigger an on or off event and the time that it actually takes place. I'm going to scroll all the way back up to our dining room section here and I'm going to take a look here and what I'm looking for is 
Murphy. So uh, we click on Murphy and we see that we actually have vacuum cleaner commands for Murphy. So we've got start and stop. Uh, and if I click start, start. and I'll click stop. So we now can control Murphy from Home Assistant as well, which is fantastic because now we can do presence detection triggers for turning Murphy on or having him stop. For example, we could have Murphy only run when we are away from home if we were happy to let him loose by himself. So as you can see, there's quite a few improvements with the new API from Tuya in Home Assistant and especially the 2021.11 edition seems to work for me here. There are still some things missing and it's worth noting that this is still a work in progress. We're not necessarily going to get everything straight off the bat in the first release of the API but it's a really good sign to see this moving in the right direction. So there you have it, the new two-year integration for Home Assistant. This is a great development. I'm very excited to see these improvements coming down the line and hopefully we'll see so many more, including better integration with more and more accessory categories and also get those attributes that I'm looking for from the smart switches so that we can gather energy monitoring data there as well. Now, as I mentioned, this is still reliant on the cloud, so I still don't feel like I can recommend an unflashed to your accessory and where possible you should probably still be seeking out a local API in favor of a cloud API for any accessories that you're introducing into your home. But these improvements to the integration do mean that I'm less likely to completely avoid an accessory just because it utilizes the two year infrastructure. That's not to say that I'm going to go out of my way to buy two year accessories, uh, but we will definitely be taking a look at a few more two year accessories now that this integration is a little bit more mature. That is all we have for this video, and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas that you'd like to see covered in future videos. And be sure to let me know what you think about the updated two-year integration for Home Assistant. Don't forget to follow HiveMind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Those links are in the video description down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so now. While you're at it, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release new videos each week. And if you're looking for a VPN provider, I've placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the description below. I've chosen to partner with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I've seen. They have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the world. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So it doesn't matter what platform you're using, you can protect your information while you browse the web, whether you're at home or in a coffee shop or at work. So get a VPN today to protect your information and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you enjoy what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, but you're not in the market for a VPN, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.